welcome to another edition of Joe News Interactive with me, Benis Abubedu. We are live on the Joe News channel on Multi TV, on DSTV channel 421, Go TV channel 144. We are also on Facebook and Twitter. Our name is Joe News on TV, and that's where you channel your thoughts uh, on various issues we are about to discuss today. Lots of issues actually to discuss today. The minority in parliament is warning uh, the president not to hand over mission schools to their owners, specifically the minority. Minority Chief Whip and the minority also thinks the budget which will be read tomorrow cannot create jobs. Also, another interesting development, ministers to pack their V8 vehicles to use Toyota Camrys. We've also got our video of the day. Thank you, my father. Uh, oh, my lord, I want to cross examine the defender, the defendant. So, Mr. Defendant, you say in your chat that you tend to a snake. True or false? True or false? Send me to me, Daniel. Oh, what? Is that who can watch all the demos? Who be Daniel? No. I met to me, Daniel. What? Electric pool. I did that when I met to me, Daniel. Who will move? Yes, I met to me, Daniel. Be dear. The owner of our diet. The owner would definitely contain into anything. True. We've got more on that on our video of the day. Plus, we'll be visiting Twitter because very interesting trends. Yes, we'll be talking about Italy and what a lot of you have been saying about their inability to qualify for next year's World Cup. And this is the first time in 60 years. We'll be getting more on that. But let's start with Minority Chief with Muntaka Mubarak. Now, he's warned uh, the Okufado government to drop plans of handing over mission schools in the country to to churches or back to their founding churches or face legal action. He's actually threatening to go to the Supreme Court. He thinks that uh, this could be an avenue for radicalizing young people. And a lot of you have been sharing your comments with us on this matter on Facebook. I must mention that uh, we've also been receiving uh, some feedback from the Christian Council. They actually think this is not an avenue for that. And we've had mission schools all along. Why would we now say that? is going to be an avenue for radicalization. Well, Eric Nana Osei Dankwa says, when you are in a position, you begin to buy your own fuel, pay light bills, maintain your vehicles, hire helps, and etc. In a position, they begin to feel the frustrations that ordinary Ghanaians have been through, and they make ugly noise about everything. Minority, please give us some peace to think about how to survive in the mess you created. All right, Papa Kwisi Reza. So, uh, Reza, so does opposition mean oppose everything? What kind of politics do we do in Ghana? It says you will do this and deceive people. When power is given to you, then you start talking rhetorics. And the MPP did the same, and the NDC is continuing from where the MPP left off. Uh, left off. These same brains we use to find means to condemn and spell doom for everything. Uh, can't that same brain fine-tune policies or give alternatives? He asks. Why do we consider uh, our stomach and selfish gains above everything else in our politics? Oh, Mother Ghana, he exclaims. Very unfortunate. Douglas Daniel Mensah says, why do people always think this way? The minority always wants to show their power by issuing threats. If you think those schools staying under the government umbrella is a better option, why not lay the facts and alternatives on the table to compare? That way, we the citizens will back you because all we seek is a better Ghana. The new government wants to try new ways to make things work, and it seems the minority only want to heckle and obstruct them from achieving their aim with no patriotic intentions in mind. And Salifu Yaya Anazim says, your bad intentions will surely push us into unveiling uh, your agenda, I'm sure you mean, if you so thought, uh, there should be mutual respect for all. The MP knows very well where this is leading uh, to. We all do, and we strongly agree with him. Remove the pimples before they turn into boils. This is Joy News Interactive. If you just tuned in, uh, we are talking about a threat from the minority chief whip, Mutaka Mubarak, uh, saying that, you know what, if government goes ahead with its plan to hand over you know, uh, these mission schools back to their founding churches. I will take it to the Supreme Court, and that's from him. And a lot of you are sharing your thoughts with us on that. And uh, Ayuvri says, uh, so 
297 schools shall be under free education and the rest will be fee paying. Uh, the dangerous and painful thing about education is if you can read and can't understand or analyze, uh, like some of the Maroons are here shouting on party lines. And um, when those schools are handed over, they are no more going to be under free education. Uh, all right, okay, for the meantime, they may feel they have to fool some people, but they can't fool all the people all the time. So he's actually doing some calculation uh, before he goes on to talk, make his point, and the fact that he's saying that we have more mission schools. So when you hand over mission schools back to the ch uh, churches, then what it means is that they will no longer be under government, and so you wouldn't have to sponsor free education. And that's his opinion. Thank you for sharing with us. Diamond A. Ruth says the schools were established by the churches. Therefore, I don't see anything wrong with handing them over to them. It was wrong to even take it from them. And uh, B. Mecca actually exclaims that this should be good news for any ordinary Ghanaian, let alone an MP. Says, good oversight or monitoring by the churches will help bring back the discipline and quality supervision, especially with the introduction of the free senior high school system. At least the churches uh, as organizations will be held accountable and not just an individual as in a headmaster or headmistress. And uh, he says he's quite disappointed in the MP. So those are some comments there. And uh, well, that's according to the minority chief who appears he's planning to take this to, uh, to the Supreme Court if government goes ahead uh, to hand over mission schools to their founding churches. We'll see what comes up with that. But thank you so much for sharing your thoughts with us. And then let's still stay with the minority uh, because uh, the major opposition New Democratic Congress, uh, they've spelled doom for the government's 2018 plan, saying the budget, which is yet to be read, tomorrow actually, cannot create jobs. The NDC spokesperson on finance, Kesa Lato Forsen, at a press conference uh, the party held in Parliament Monday made the declaration as a conclusion to a series of other gloomy verdicts he dealt on the 11-month-old Akufado-led MPP government. Now, according to him, the 2018 budget, contrary to the expectations of the NPP, will not create any jobs to alleviate uh, Ghanaians or the pain of Ghanaians uh, because of some four reasons he explained on behalf of the NTC. Among that he said uh, Ghana was going to go back into HIPAC and then we're going back to uh, the situation in 1983 where there was a lot of uh, hardship and hunger. Well Kwame Donkrua says I think this is the first time anywhere in the world that an opposition party calls a press conference ahead to announce what is in a budget yet to be presented even though they haven't seen the final document, uh, all right, he claims or were involved in this preparation. It's called, that's what is called desperation. There are 47 replies to this comment. I always love it when we have interaction like this on our Facebook page. Let's see what other people are saying about Kwame's comment. Eric Woodon says, that is what is called vision. Just wait and see what the outcome will be. Kwame comes, comes back to ask vision. From the bunch of guys who couldn't even build a simple Excel sheet to collate their own election results, he said it's called ineptitude, simply incompetence. In fact, crass incompetence. Evans Kojuajaman says, when did they start having that vision? He's actually asking Eric. And Fred Enya Ango says, economists can make projections. If Mr. Veep said there will be a 25% cut uh, of of electricity tariffs to the industry, budgets are never fixed, but anticipated and projected, my brother. Therefore, predictions are allowed. And who told you this is only happening in Ghana? Please take it easy, uh, Kwame. Uh, Fred says you should take it easy. And Eric comes back says the facts and figures of our economy are out there for everyone. And they can do an interpretation or ext extrapolation uh, to make predictions. Economic analysis, not a rocket science. And so one must have a PhD as you always claim to understand. Interesting conversation going on there. All in response to the minority's claim that the 2018 budget will not create jobs. In fact, they are predicting gloom. And they, they claim that Ghana is going back into HIPIC. And they claim we will have a lot of hardship like it was in 1983. So enough of the reactions to Kwame's uh, comments there. Over 40 reactions there. And... Um, Opoku Eric Wudong is actually, uh, Opoku Hari is actually laughing at Eric Wudong. Let's see some other comments apart from this. And uh, Natongma Harun says, can we take the NDC serious any longer? It's a party uh, that's hijacked 
by babies with sharp teeth. They don't provide any intellectual view, all right? And that's what Natomak thinks, except conjecture, insult, lies, and creating fear and panic. Most of them are still schooling. Oh, really? <laughs> I'm not sure the MPs. Well, they may still be schooling, but they have basic understanding of some of the things that happen in the country. At least, at least we can take that from them. Um, says, yet they are experts in their party. It's very difficult, Natoma, because I don't know who you're referring to, whether NDC members in general or NDC MPs. Nitei Kotego says, um, Oh, really? I don't think so, Aniteko. Uh, sorry, I'm not going to read that. Samuel Kwe says, where can you find uh, CARES in economics, banking, finance, or accounting? Uh, all right. I'm not sure what he means by that. And uh, G.H. Kwame La Liga says, NDC party members, are they human beings? I wonder because upon all that Nana is doing, they don't appreciate. They should give us a break. And Oliver K says, this government and this management team are like little forecasters. The era of try and error is gone. We need pragmatic minds to develop this country. All right. Uh, join you still. Uh, your VIP. Uh, I don't know if Oliver is a Ghanaian. Uh, the era of pedestrian economics are over. He should put together correct figures now that he's in government. Eleven replies to that. Uh, we're not going to go into that. And Adomako Brimpong says, um, you're not trying to compare yourself to an elephant. How can you now learning to ride for your master's come near Vice President Balmia, who's a professor uh, in finance and economics? If you are told had knowledge about all you're saying, we Ghanaians wouldn't have voted uh, you and uh, the NDC out. And then he thinks that Mr. Atoforsen should keep quiet. Interesting comments there we are getting. And uh, we'll quickly take a breather. But before that, from 2018, ministers and their deputies will use Toyota Camrys and Corollas instead of the usual Toyota V8s we see them in as part of economic measures to be introduced by the Akufadu led government. What do you make of this? I'll be taking your thoughts right after this breather. Please don't go away. Thanks for staying here on Joe News Interactive with me, Benis Abubedu. So from 2018, ministers and their deputies will use Toyota Camrys and Corollas instead of the V8s uh, because that's part of some economic measures uh, introduced by this government. What do you make of this? A lot of you have been sharing your thoughts, interesting ones. Salon Baroski says whether V8 or Camry, 110 ministers are too much. Cut the number of ministers instead if you really want to reduce cost. Eight replies to that. Let's see what people think about Selom's comment over there. Israel Bamoza says the salary of those 110 ministers is less than that of previous government. Uh, that's what he claims. Take Nia, he says, Israel, what are you saying? Abadja Samuel says, how do you justify that? And uh, Okay, says so go and do your research and all that. So a lot of interaction going on there. And uh, quickly, Marcus Nicholas says, the idea is laudable, but I strongly suggest the government should rather acquire Kantanka automobiles, uh, automobiles instead of buying these Toyota cars. Hmm, interesting suggestion. Joe Johansson says, this will be good. If they'll go for long distance and off-road uh, trips, then they can use the V8s. But then how would it work? Uh, for, for example, would you have um, a number of V8s that ministers would actually book ahead of a journey? I, 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 I'm really wondering how that's going to work. Uh, because, you know, as you leave the capital, a lot of the roads are bad. And Justice Chumisi Amwating says, Good governance has come to stay. This cast will save fuel cost and the government will keep these unnecessary sirens on the road. Governance is about serving the people not to have fun. Mm. So if any of them want to uh, or want a VA, they should purchase it themselves. I'm quite thrilled about this initiative. It will take Nana to do this. Thanks so much, Papa. That's from justice. Suleiman Amin. M Muniru says a lot of factors contributed to this mess and they cannot be solved uh, by the VA alone. I think that all public expenditure should be reduced drastically because even if they use trotro and they, cont they continue to inflate fig figures for TNT, it will remain the same. Thanks for your comments, Suleiman. Walanyo Benya says the safety and security of our leaders on the road is important. Considering the kind of road network we have, it's not prudent to do this. Cross-country vehicles like Toyota Land Cruisers 
don't have a replacement in these mini cars uh, let's, let's take a last one from bavi augustine he says they should auction the vas if not some defined ministries will still use them even when the president instructed no purchase of new vehicles and um after assuming office, some agencies and institutions still defy the order. Bavi Augustine uh, is, is saying that. But what we know about that is that those vehicles were actually ordered before the president's directive came. Well, that's the excuse we got. And so a lot of you sharing your comments there from 2018. This government is saying, oh, where with the VAs? Let's use Toyota Camrys and Corollas and save some cost. But a lot of you are offering some suggestions. Why not use Kantanka vehicles? I just think this is really impossible considering the road network as you leave the capital. It's really terrible, and we need to protect the lives of our uh, leaders. But let's move away from this. There's some controversy over the Major Mahama Trust Fund, with some Ghanaians asking President Okufado not to assent to it. These Ghanaians believe the bill should not cater only for Major Mahama and his family, but should include every security officer who loses his life or her life in the line of duty. What do you think? Uh, Veronica says, yes. He's asking us, Ghana, uh, for them alone. We have security personnel that lost their lives, and this is not exceptional. Al Hassan says, I strongly agree. All security personnel who lose their lives in the line of discharging their duty. And Christiana Kuhn says, this is just common sense. We don't need to waste time on it. Uh, so nothing of that came into the minds of the MPs. He's asking. Mbo Bannon says, I equally share the same sentiment. It would be suicidal and a bad precedent if the president assents uh, to that uh, fund or bill. Richmond Apiakubi says, one of the easiest professions in our time is to be a politician. He says, this is a non-starter in the first place. And Raf Edu says, I think it should be for all security personnel who die, uh, who die, I beg your pardon, who die while on duty and not only for Major Mahama. Matea Doku says, I thought it was supposed to cater for other persons rather than just his family. This is not fair to other security personnel in this country. That should have been the objective of the whole fund. Serve a general purpose. Mr. President, please generalize it for the greater good. And um, the um, um, baby says, right, it should be for all officers who've lost their life in service. So the debate on this continues. And uh, well, from what I'm reading, a lot of you think that this should be generalized, that President Kufado, if you're listening, uh, from our own sample here on Joy News Interactive, this is what people are suggesting. And we, uh, they're hoping through this platform that you'd consider. Now let's get on to Twitter, because something interesting is happening on Twitter. Uh, yes, I know, you know, Italy is trending. But before we get to Italy, hashtag me at 14 is trending. And it's trending simply because, uh, you know, someone in the US who's uh, hoping to be a senator on the ticket of the Republicans has been... Um, actually fingered in a scandal, if you may want to call it, uh, while he was 32, apparently he was dating a 14-year-old. And someone came to his defense and, uh, you know, that, well, 14, mm, that child could have consented. So what people are doing is getting onto Twitter, taking photos of themselves or putting up photos of themselves when they were 14 or talking about what they were doing at 14. And the fact that really at 14, really, you can't consent to having a relationship with a man. And Roy Moore is the man here at 32. So Alisa Milano tweets, hashtag me at 14. I worshipped my brother. I loved my dog. I loved Ondi. I had big hair. I was happy. I was innocent. Please share your hashtag me at 14. And Olivia Pope says, hashtag me at 14. I was a freshman in high school. I was a virgin. My stepfather got home from work at 3.30 every day. I go home at 3.45. We were alone for at least an hour every day. He would make me sit on his lap and kiss him and touch, me, touch him. And he would touch me all right. So uh, a lot of people also sharing experiences either of abuse uh, while they were also 14. And uh, Liz says, I was actually 15 in this picture but pregnant at 14 it took me decades to realize uh, the most of the bad things that happened to me were not my fault i'm so happy that we might have to put a stop to men abusing girls and women hashtag me at 14 hashtag no more and guess what the more there is a double 
oh and it's not a mistake because the man in question here is Roy Moore and his name is M-O-O-R-E is deliberate the hashtag no more and uh, we'll just pick a few more and move on Brandon says when I was 14 a 37 year old man I met on the internet picked me up from my parents house in the dead of the night drove me to his house and raped me I had no idea what I was doing at the time and held on to that secret for 20 years I was scared and ashamed hashtag no more hashtag me at 14 if you have a similar experience we want to talk about what you were doing at 14 and the fact that you may not agree that at 14 you you really are aware of what you're doing uh and you can consent to something like having a relationship with a 32 year old man just get onto twitter and follow that hashtag me at 14. another trend on twitter is italy yes and for the first time in 60 years the football giants are not making it to the world cup really sad and it's more sad because of buffon you know uh keys actually de announced that he's going to retire and he was hoping to you know go to the world cup and maybe win it and then hang his boots you know very excited and happy we know he wanted to do that with the champions league it didn't happen uh, because real madrid beat his team and then now it's with the national team it's really sad for me because you know buffon yeah i think he should have left with something good and um so people are tweeting about it, and even here in Ghana, it's top trends. Let's just pick a few of your tweets, and then we'll wrap up today's show. So footy jokes, uh, Sweden with Zlatan 2010 and 2014 failed to qualify to the World Cup. Sweden without Zlatan defeated Italy to qualify for the 2018 World Cup. And there you have it. And uh, if we could just scroll up quickly and see more comments. And um, all right, so there you have it. Um, this has to do with something with history and pictures and uh, a lot of tweets there. One I actually read this morning uh, had to do with the fact that someone was extremely sad that Buffon wouldn't make it to this World Cup and tried to draw a comparison between Buffon and Usain Bolt and how, you know, they are all, Usain has retired, Buffon has announced his retirement, but how it's such an anticlimax for these two, you know, sports people who are in their own right uh, some great sportsmen. But that's how we end today's edition of Journeys Interactive. My name is Benis Abu Bedu. The interactivity continues on all our platforms on Facebook and Twitter. We are Joy News on TV. I'll leave you with our video of the day. Take care. Thank you, my father. Uh, oh, my lord. I want to cross examine the defender. The defender. So, Mr. Defendant, you say in your chat that you tend to a snake. True or false? True or false? Send me to me, Daniel. Oh, what? Is that who can what sorry demos will be Daniel? No. I met to me, Daniel. What? Electric pool. I did that when I met to me, Daniel. Who will move? Yes, I met to me, Daniel. Be dear. The owner of our diet. The owner would definitely contain into anything. True. Your Honor, thank you very much. Please sit down. Mr. Defendant, as you say that you turn into a snake, you turn or not? Sir, time or no? To my name, can't turn sir. At that time? Sir, time or no? At that time? Now, oh, oh, no. In the spirit? Now, my name is Jesus. He was talking to his father, Jesus. Yeah, no, They were drinking to him. <laughs> In the process of drinking tea with his father Jesus, Jesus fell asleep. What I know, Satan made a new war. Of death is, of death is. Your father, you see, whose father? <laughs> the first time I say your mother, he says that you saw so. <laughs> Sorry, your honor. Your honor, before we start, this Malayan colleague, he said that we don't deal with spiritual things here. True or false? True. I put it to you that you are sitting there, you are talking about spirit matter. You put it to who? <laughs> <laughs> if you promise and you don't deliver, good or bad? And you're not crying, and you're not crying. Question, answer the question. Oh, no, his ways are not our ways. Whose ways?